So, I'm guessing you've just built yourself something pretty fancy in Minecraft, and now you're wondering how to take a screenshot that would do your build some justice. Well, you might have just found the right video. Here are my five tips for taking better screenshots in Minecraft. Now, before we go any further, let's take a look at the basics. The simplest way to take a screenshot in game is to press F1 to turn off the HUD, and then press F2 to take the screenshot. Now, to access these screenshots, you need to go to your .minecraft folder, which can be found by searching in your Windows search bar at percent update. Data percent. Now, one other thing before we carry on with this video, I will be mainly focusing on the Java version of Minecraft, but a lot of these skills will be transferable to Bedrock, so never fear. But anyway, guys, now you've learned how to take a screenshot, it's time to take a better one. Let's start off with my first tip, composition. So you're probably wondering, what is composition? Well, the basic way of saying it is how the subject relates to its surroundings. So you've just finished your build and you go to take that killer screenshot, but wait, there's a load of junk in the background behind it. Old build, you've just left the rot there, random pixel art floating in the sky. Well, for starters, this isn't gonna make your build look any better. It's actually gonna detract from the overall feeling of it. So what you want to do is make sure everything is nice and clean around your build. Now this is easier said than done if you've already built it and you haven't got access to world edit or you can't move it around in your world. So the best thing to do here is to build yourself a wall up behind the building. It could just be a blank wall, you know, made out of white concrete, black concrete, something just to hide all of the surroundings behind it. Now this is great for when you're building townhouses as you don't have to build left or right of the townhouse, you can just put nice big walls of concrete up. Now, the other way that I like to do this actually it looks a lot better is by building trees. Building, planting, growing, you know how the game works, custom, Minecraft, normal, let's go for any trees possible, get a forest going up the back there. Now, this is great. It's a great way of hiding any little details you don't want people to see in the background, but it also adds to the build. But still, let's take it one step further and build yourself an entire landscape, city, server, whatever you want. So, you're now standing in front of this build and there's a lot of green space around it, especially if you're in a super flat world. So that's where my tip number two comes into play. Let's have a look at the field of view. So the field of view is accessible via the settings menu. You go in there, there's a slider in there and you can move it between 90 and 30. Now the best place to have it for me is between 30, 45 slash 50, depending on the size of your project. Now the reason I say that is because you need to actually move back away from your building so that when you zoom in using the field of view, you don't lose your build because it obviously goes in, becomes like a spyglass. Yes, you probably can use the 1.17 spyglass although I wouldn't do this for this type of thing. Now, if you are using mods such as Optifine, you can press C to get an even closer view on the end of that 30, and you get some really cool effects with that. So give it a little try and see what you come out with. But still, this is a great way of making your builds actually pop a lot better because you hide everything else in the background. You focus right in on that building. So let's move on to tip number three, which is the time of day. Now this becomes very important when you want to set a mood for the build. You can obviously go through from night, through to day, through to sort of sunset, sunrise, and this becomes even more important when we look at tip number four in a second. But to do this, you need to go to your command line in game. So if you are playing on a server or in survival, you obviously have to wait for the time of day to change. But if you do have control over it, the best point is to choose the sort of time when the sun's rising or when the sun's setting. So between 1,000 and 3,000 ticks or between 9,000 and 11,000 ticks on the other end for your sunrise and your sunset. Now this becomes very important when you do install things such as shaders. So moving on to tip number four, the shaders. Yes, I know this can be controversial because it is a mod and not everyone actually has access to it due to their hardware variations or even their version of the game they can use. Now for me, I always use BSL version 8.1. These are ones I know and love and I can change all the settings to do what I want to do. Now there are so many different variations of shaders out there, so go pick one you like. Now anyway guys, shaders work in a way of adding a bit of makeup to your build. So when you take a screenshot, it really does make all the details pop because you've now got some light bouncing off areas along with some bits of shadow as well. Speaking of issues that you can actually get with shaders is when it comes to start talking about the time of day. Now obviously you have noon, everything's lit, but then you want to go for this nice golden light, the sunset, the sunrise, and you suddenly change your time to let's say about 9am in the morning and you realise that your build's actually facing south or north and it's not getting this golden view. So what you can do here is obviously if you have world edit, 
flip the build around, change the direction, make sure it all sits in a location you can get a good screenshot with. However, if you can't do that, some shaders do offer you the chance to actually go in and change the direction of the sun. It's always something to think about when you are going to take a screenshot with shaders, because otherwise when you come to take that screenshot, your build's facing the wrong way and you miss out on that golden light. So sticking on the train of shaders, let's look at an effect you can actually add with some of these, and that is the depth of field. So what you can do with this is it's an effect you add to make close up things look really nice and sharp while the background looks nice and blurry and it gives a nice way of contrast in your images. Now for me, I barely use this unless I'm doing some close up shots of some interiors or some buildings I don't want the back to always come in. Now what I tend to do is set mine between four and eight on the strength scale within BSL on the shader settings there, but you can obviously go through and find ones that suit. Now if you do have access to Photoshop or other sort of editing softwares, you can go in and add this in later on using obviously some techniques to add extra depth to a picture but as a sort of little side note as well once you've done all of this here you're now going to have a picture ready to post to social media but before you do that I recommend putting on a watermark now you can do this in using just like MS Paint or as I just mentioned Photoshop or any other photo editing software because the best way to keep your builds safe and yours is to put a watermark on them so no one can steal them although people still do steal them and repost them even with your own watermark on them. It's a strange, strange world out there. Stay safe, guys. But anyway, I hope you found this interesting and I hope this has given you an insight as to how I take my screenshots and how you can go about taking screenshots as well that look pucker and really nice. But anyway, guys, remember, get inspired, get building, and I'll see you next time.